Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ming, and I welcome you guys uh, back to another episode of Unit Analysis, the series where we talk about units from the Advanced Wars games in great detail. And in today's episode, we are checking out maybe the most important unit in the game, the infantry. Actually, strike that. They're not one of the most important units. They are definitely, without a doubt, the most important unit in the game. Uh, they're kind of like pawns in a game of chess. Uh, they may not be very strong on their own, but together they constitute a huge part of the game itself. And how you use infantry units will decide whether you win or lose your matches. And this is one of the biggest differences between newer Advanced Force players and more skilled Advanced Force players, is how they play with their infantry, how often they build infantry, and just generally how they utilize them. So. Infantry are obviously slow and weak, and they're incredibly cheap, costing only a thousand to produce, so they will be the units you build most of the time early on in matches. However, the thing about infantry is that uh, as the match progresses and you start to build more expensive units, you still have to keep a steady stream of infantry coming throughout the entire game. If you stop building infantry at any point, uh, you will slowly start to lose the match. Even though it's more tempting to build more expensive units, you always need to build infantry, because of course, infantry are they are basically your economy. They're kind of like villagers and niche vampires, I would say. Because they are the only units, uh, aside from mechs, who we will be talking about in another, another episode, that can capture properties. And capturing properties is how you win Advance Wars. Each property gives you generally a thousand funds, so they are the economy of your game. And so if you don't have infantry, you cannot capture properties, and that will basically cost you the game. You won't be able to win if you don't have properties. So you need to keep those infantry coming constantly. Now, uh, by default, infantry will take 10 points of a uh, property. Properties have 20 capture points in total, so it takes two turns to capture a building uh, fully. Uh, however, if the infantry has taken a little bit of damage, uh, then it will usually spend three turns. If it takes a lot of damage, then it can take a lot more than that. So this is very important to keep in mind. It's generally nice to try and keep your infantry on full health so they can capture buildings more uh, effectively. Uh, but uh, they do so much more than that. Capturing is just a part of the infantry's utility. I think one of the biggest things about infantry that people may not think about uh, that much is how they shield your other units. Uh, being only worth a thousand, they are incredibly expendable, and you know it feels a bit cynical to say this, but they are basically cannon fodder. You you put them in front of your other more valuable units. A medium tank can't get to the juicy artillery in the back if it's blocked off by infantry, which will allow the artillery to be incredibly effective. So infantry are also very good at trapping units in fog of war. Uh, you know, putting them in forests, for example, makes it very likely for enemies to trap themselves on the infantry. And, and, and again, and if an infantry manages to trap a medium tank, then it's already earned itself in 16 times over. So this is definitely something you want to do. Whenever you build units in Advanced Wars, you want to take a look at how much money you have available, you want to take a look at your available bases, and you want to make sure that you utilize every one of those bases. So I wouldn't want to build a missile now, for example, because then I wouldn't have enough money to build infantry in all my bases. If I do that, I have idle bases and that is incredibly bad. Your bases in Advanced Wars should be looked upon as a resource. Uh, if you have three bases, you should always deploy three ground units every single turn. Uh, leaving a base idle is essentially wasting um, a base. So that means you're going to have less units than you could have. And Advanced Wars, it's very much a game about uh, quantity over quality. Whoever has more units on the map generally wins because having more units on the map just means you can do so much more. You can trap your enemy, you can scout better. Now, speaking of scouting, this is another thing that the infantry does very well. It may not have a lot of vision on its own, only have two vision, but when you have a lot of them, they're still effective in that regard. But of course, one of the things you can do with infantry, which is incredibly nice, is you can move them into a mountain, and then they gain five vision. That is as much as the recon. Of course, they can't move away from the mountain without losing this vision, but it still allows them to act as sentries of sorts. And while they're in mountains too, they almost take no damage, because the mountains give them 40% extra defense. Uh, they can only cross one mountain per turn. Mechs can cross two, actually. As you can see right here, they only pay one. We'll talk more about mechs in another episode. Um, though, do keep in mind that if it's snowing, they will not be able to cross mountains at all. Infantry can also cross rivers, something vehicles cannot do. So, while their mobility is kind of limited, uh, they can move a lot better through rough terrain than many vehicles can. So, this is definitely something that they do very well. So they're great scouts, and uh, they're basically just the meat shield of your army. They stand in front of your other units, preventing them from taking damage. However, in combat, infantry also have a big role. Um, they may not be able to fire on other units than infantry, 
Uh, but that is very important because you don't want to waste one of your tank's turns shooting on an infantry, unless that's the only thing the tank can do, obviously. Uh, your tanks and more expensive vehicles, they generally want to be fighting the enemy's vehicles. That's not to say you should never fi fire on an infantry with a tank, of course you should, if it's the only target available to them. But generally speaking, you want to use your infantry to fight the opponent's infantry. If you have to use a very expensive unit like a medium tank or a neo tank to clear away infantry because you don't have any infantry, then that's very bad for you, because that means your opponent can come in with a vehicle and get the first strike on your vehicle, and that's not a good thing. So against other infantry, uh, infantry will deal 55% damage, which is kind of like the standard value in most mirror matchups. So that means they have a chance of doing either five or six points of damage. Here they did five, which I think is the most statistic, uh, is the most likely thing to happen. So this is most often the outcome. So again, the attacker win, but it is a little bit luck dependent. Sometimes they'll reduce the infantry to six HP instead. Uh, when taking engagements on planes, which I think is the most standard type uh, for infantry because they're very often wandering off roads uh, to capture cities and whatnot, so this is a more likely encounter to take place, uh, they will usually do around 5 HP of damage too. Sometimes they have a small chance of doing 4, uh, but that is not very likely to happen. So, infantry, they fight decently against other infantry, which you might have guessed. Now, against the mech, uh, the infantry does a little bit less damage, only 45%, so that's 10% less. However, this is still always a good engagement to take. Whenever you get a chance to shoot on an enemy mech with an infantry, you should almost always take it. Because the mech is worth three times as much. So this, by default, is a very good engagement for you to take. Not only are the mechs more expensive, but they're also much slower, so it takes a long time to get a mech into the center. So just by that um, logic, uh, taking out a mech when it's in the center is very valuable, because your opponent has spent a lot of time getting them into the center, hoping to maybe get a tank to shoot at or something more valuable. And the fact that you're able to shoot on the mech with your infantry kind of sets a stop to those plans. So that's always a good thing to do whenever you see a mech that's in range of your infantry. You should almost always attack them. Maybe unless the mech is in a mountain and you're on a road, then you may not want to consider it, but you generally want to do that. Now, um, attacking a vehicle with an infantry is not a smart idea. Most of the time, they end up dealing single-digit damage to them. Uh, so maybe they'll do one HP of damage if they're lucky, because of course there is a luck roll in this game. And I also have to point out, I know I say this at the start of every episode, but while I am playing Asami, I am turning powers off, so her infantry are no stronger than usual. Um, but yeah, they. when you attack vehicles with infantry, don't expect them to do well. However, don't underestimate targeting low HP vehicles with infantry. They might still be able to clear them out, ju just thanks to the luck damage. In case you don't know, every unit in Advanced Wars has a 0-9% to luck modifier, which means that they can take out 1 HP vehicles, even though it says 0% or 1%. They can do it, sometimes. So definitely do that. Uh, sometimes I think it's definitely worth it to go for a low HP vehicle and sh shoot on it. Like, for example, here, we have 3 infantry against a 6 HP medium tank. If we attack it with every single one of our infantry, we might be able to take a couple of HP off this guy. Now, we injure our infantry quite heavily in the process, of course, so you have to decide whether or not you think this is worth it. But it might be, at some point, if you really need to get rid of this medium tank, if it's threatening a lot of your units, maybe it's a good idea to send three infantry units into it. We took two HP off it, and we lost... Two, three of our infantry got injured. So, if these guys were going to do a lot of capping, maybe not such a good idea. However, if they weren't going to do a lot of capping, I would say that this is a pretty effective engagement. In fact, if this battle keeps going on, I do believe the infantry will win eventually. Because the, the, the medium tank will just become weaker and weaker and weaker. If you somehow manage to get infantry to attack uh, enemy indirects, they can do decently. They don't do much against artillery, 15%, which is okay, somewhere between 1 and 2 HP. Of course, in artillery are very seldom located on the road, unless they're in the process of moving somewhere. Uh, however, if you can get them to attack rockets, you should always do it, because they can usually take between 2 to 3 HP off a rocket, which is always very effective. You know, the rockets are worth 15 times as much as the infantry, so this is obviously fantastic. Same thing with missiles, if you encounter them out in the open, always take a shot at them. It's not going to render them useless, but it's definitely going to be annoying, considering the indirects can't shoot back. This is something you definitely have to keep in mind. In addition to this, uh, infantry are also one of the only units that can launch missiles. Uh, this is, of course, map dependent. Very few maps, I've noticed, actually have missile silos, but on the maps that do, they can be very effective, as you can see here. Obviously, this is the dream scenario right here. Uh, but yeah, uh, once those missiles are used up, they basically create these empty missile silos, which are like cities that can't be captured. 
Uh, however, maybe one of the most important things that infantry uh, does is interrupting camps. I've always said this, that whenever you find yourself having to, to use your vehicles to interrupt captures, you're in a tough spot. Because interrupting captures is maybe the most important thing that you can do in Advanced Wars. Here we can see um, a yellow combat infantry has started capping a, a property. Now you always want to try and interrupt it with your infantry first, if you can do this. Infantry will do 38% base damage against another infantry capping a property, unless there's some firepower increases. Which means that usually they'll take between 3 to 4 HP of damage. However, um, you you will see that they do more damage the lower HP the infantry is, because, of course, uh, the lower HP unit is, the less uh, defense it receives from terrain. This is another hidden mechanic of Advanced Wars, uh, to prevent units from staying alive longer than they should. However, it is still impossible to uh, interrupt a capture fully with two infantry. You'll need three, unless you are playing with a CO with a firepower increase, like Sami, for example. She can do it with two. But most regular COs need three infantry to fully interrupt a capture. And then they can move in and capture the property of their own. So, very important to have many infantry available, not just to scout, not just to shield your opponents, but also to interrupt enemy captures. Very important to do that, because you don't want to, as I said, you don't want to uh, waste the turn of a unit worth ten times as much as the infantry to interrupt a capture, unless that is the only unit capable of doing it, of course, then you should do it. Now, as for the infantry's survivability, they do get pretty wrecked uh, by most units. Recons do 70% base damage to them, so recons primarily will try to harass infantry as often as they can. So you don't want to, you don't want to meet inf or recons out in the open as infantry. That's not a good day for the infantry. Um, tanks also do quite a lot of damage to them, 75%, so they'll usually leave them at around 2 HP. Medium tanks have the ability to one-shot infantry completely, as long as they're on roads. They can do it on planes if they're very lucky, because planes give 10% defense, so it depends a little bit on the luck roll. But out on roads, uh, medium tanks can clear through infantry in a single turn. This is very nice uh, if you need to break through a line of infantry with indirects in the back. Uh, Neo tanks do a, a lot of damage at 125%, so uh, unless the infantry are on properties, they will not survive this. Uh, Anpire are also incredibly strong against infantry, dealing 105% base damage. So Anpire is another unit that can deal with infantry particularly well. Honestly, it should just be called Anti-EI, like Anti-Infantry, because it does this incredibly well. Uh, mechs also do a lot of damage to infantry, 65% base. So if mechs get the first strike on infantry, I would say it's a cost-effective engagement, especially if the mech has some defensive terrain. Uh, but you still want to be careful going into battle with infantry with your mechs, because your mechs definitely want to be off shooting other things. Uh, artillery deals 90% base damage, so they do a lot to infantry as well, but they cannot one-shot them unless they have a small firepower increase. Even if you max out your luck damage, you will not be able to kill an infantry in a single shot. Uh, rockets do 95, so that's about a coin flip whether or not they one-shot the infantry or not. They might, and here they did. So again, it, it depends on how you roll your luck damage. Uh, Battlecopters do 75%, so that's as much as tanks, so they're also very good at harassing infantry and interrupting captures. Uh, Battlecopters will usually take some damage back, though, if they do it a lot of times, because Battlecopters are quite frail, and the luck damage will start to get to them sooner or later. Uh, bombers do 110% base damage, so they can also one-shot infantry on planes. So, uh, but... Generally speaking, <laughs> if, if a bomber is attacking your infantry, and that, that probably means the infantry is doing its job, because the bomber wants to be off shooting other targets. And lastly, battleships also do as much as the rockets at 95%, so it's a coin flip whether or not they kill the infantry or not. Sometimes they will, sometimes they will not. So, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, join capping. Join capping is something that every Advanced Force players need to learn how to do. It is... I'd say one of the biggest maneuvers uh, that a advanced player knows over a beginner. Uh, joint capping is when here we have a, a situation where we've started capping three properties and we've been interrupted by three infantry as coming to take a shot at us. So as you can see right here, we can keep capping, but it won't allow us to get the city because next turn they'll shoot at us again and eventually they'll be able to drive us away. Kinda if they roll low on the luck, maybe we'll be able to get some of these cities, but it's not gonna be good for us. So we have some choices here. We can either shoot back, but then we won't be able to capture. Or we can run away, but then we forego the capture as well. So is there any way we can actually keep capping and keep those infantry alive? Well, that's where join capping comes in. So when, if you want to join cap, first you cap, like you always do. And you can see that we almost, almost get the properties. Not completely, but we almost get them. And then we join the units together. 
Now, you won't, this won't end up losing you money. If you take a look at our income or our available funds right now, any HP above 10 gets converted into funds. So we get the money back when we do this. But we do lose out on three units in total. We could have had six infantry, now we have three. So it's not like this is completely without costs. Uh, we have sacrificed a little bit of map presence. However, we have made it impossible for the enemy to interrupt this cap now, unless, of course, they have more inf infantry or indirects in the back. So you want to join cap whenever there's a property on the map that you really badly want, that you're fighting hard over and you desperately want to take. Um, you don't always want to join camp. Sometimes it's better to have extra infantry. It kind of depends on the situation. But knowing how to join camp is very important if you want to play Advanced Force on a higher level. So definitely something you've got to keep in mind. So I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about the infantry. Obviously, one of the reasons why commanders like Sami um, is so strong is because she has better infantry. And this is just incredibly good because infantry constitutes such a, a big part of uh, the game. Same with commanders like Sensei. One of the reasons why Advanced Wars 2 Jess is so weak is because she has lower in, uh, firepower and in infantry, which really severely hampers her capture game. So again, knowing how to capture, knowing how to use infantry, and more importantly, spamming infantry as much as possible is the key to winning many Advanced Wars matches. If you don't do this, you're going to really struggle and be behind. And at the end of the day, if things go really poorly, you can always attempt to sneak an infantry behind enemy lines and capture the enemy HQ and try to win that way. Although, expect your opponent to be very angry at you if you actually manage to pull this off. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to say about the infantry. Uh, do you like this episode? Do you think there's something I missed? Definitely add it in the comment section. And let me know what unit you would like to see next time uh, on this series. Uh, one thing that I was actually going to speak about a little bit was the bike unit from Days of Ruin, because that's actually a very interesting concept. There's infantry with more, more movement. I might make a, a separate video on that some other day. Uh, I might have to cover some, some Days of Ruin exclusive units um, at some point. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!